Okay, we're now going to talk about hepatic tumors, a little bit about their complications, and then uh, one more miscellaneous thing. So hepatic cellular carcinoma. This is a malignant tumor of the, of the liver. Etiologies here. Liver cirrhosis, chronic hepatitis, chronic ingestion of food contaminated by aflatoxin. So when I say liver cirrhosis, I include all its underlying causes. So what do we just say? What were the underlying causes of cirrhosis? Um, broad picture, hepatotoxicity, inflammation, metabolic problems. Um, liver cirrhosis, chronic hepatitis, both cause long-term inflammation, damage, mutation to the cells, and then development of cancer. What is this aflatoxin thing? So aflatoxin is a carcinogen generated by the Aspergillus bacteria. And it can grow, this bacteria grows on improperly stored nuts and grains, okay? So you have this bacteria and it's secreting aflatoxin. Aflatoxin causes inactivation of the P53 gene. Remember P53, guardian of the cell cycle. Inactivation of that, you get mutations, you can develop cancer. Okay, so those are our etiologies. Clinical features, very general stuff. Very, um, it just presents with symptoms of underlying disease. So symptoms of whatever that maybe hepatotoxicity, symptoms of Wilson's disease. You don't, there's no symptoms of, of the liver tumor yet that presents later. The serum tumor, serum tumor market here is the alpha protein, and that's, that's secreted by the liver. And then the other thing I want to talk about is that this one spreads hematogenously. Okay, remember that usually solid carcinomas, okay, tumors from epithelial tissue usually spread lymphatically. But liver cancer is an exception. Liver cancer, do you remember what the other exceptions are? Exceptions are liver cancer, renal cancer, follicular thyroid cancer, and choriocarcinoma. Again, renal cancer, liver cancer, follicular thyroid cancer, and choriocarcinoma spread hematogenously. The other ones that spread hematogenously are sarcomas. That's tumors from connective tissue or non-epithelial tissue. Those also spread hematogenously. So if this can spread hematogenously, what can happen is this tumor can spread, extend into the hepatic vein, and it's going to cause obstruction and Bud Chiari syndrome, okay? Now we're going to talk about that next. So again, malignant tumor of the liver, etiologies are simple, just chronic inflammation or um, inactivations of the P53 gene through aflatoxin consumption. Uh, clinical features very nonspecific, just symptoms of underlying disease. Alpha feeder protein, note that, do note that for liver cancer. And the hematogenous spread. Okay, we're going to talk about Bud Chiari syndrome now. Bud Chiari syndrome is an obstruction of the hepatic venous outflow. Okay, so there's obstruction here. If you have poor venous outflow, you're going to get congestion of the liver because all this blood is going to stay in the liver, become congested. And then you're going to get increased pressure in these vessels inside the liver, in the liver sinusoidal vessels. Okay. Again, what do, we saw, what do we say when we get pressure in these vessels? Pressure leads to compression and hypoxia. Okay, compression of the vessels leading to hypoxia. Hypoxia leads to hepatocyte damage and necrosis. See this over and over again. You don't have to memorize this. It's just general. Okay, so now we have necrosis. So this can progress to either acute liver failure or cirrhosis, which I think of as basically chronic liver failure. Okay, now this, this obstruction of the hepatic venous outflow can arise from a variety of factors. One, from thrombosis in the hepatic veins. So thrombosis can arise from things like being having a hypercoagulable state, having polycythemia vera, which is having too much red blood cells, or being in a postpartum state where you are hypercoagulable. The other cause of this um, obstruction is from tumor extension from hepatocellular carcinoma, which we just said spreads, he spreads hematogenously. So anyways, all of these can cause either maybe a blood clot, a tumor, causes obstruction, and get increased pressure in the, um, in the liver. Clinical features of this, they're very easy. It's just the, the big picture syndromes of congestive liver disease and portal hypertension. This should make sense. We just keep, I keep telling you about all this congestion in here. So what was congestive liver disease symptoms again? Remember that's hepatomegaly, again, it's congested, it gets bigger. You get ascites, you get varices, and then um, portal hypertension causes ascites. You can get that varices. Remember, what were the varices that we saw? We saw esophageal varices. We saw umbilical varices, the caput medusa. We saw internal hemorrhoids. 
Okay, and you can also have abdominal pain. I'll do this increased pressure in the liver. The other thing I want to note is even though there's venous distension, there's distension in all these veins back here, you don't see jugular venous distension. Why is that? Because jugular, the jugular veins are further downstream. This obstruction here is, um, is before the jugular veins, so those jugular veins are not going to be distended at all. Okay, on to hepatic adenoma. As you can tell from the name, this is a benign tumor of hepatocytes. And the important thing to know about this is that it's associated with oral contraceptives or anabolic, anabolic steroid use. And there's a reason for that. It's because adenomas develop from these increased levels of hormones, okay? Uh, the thing I want, other thing you want to know is that these can regress spontaneously, especially with cessation of the drugs. But you can also have to be wary because they can rupture. And if they rupture, you're going to get intraperitoneal bleeding and hypovolemic shock. And that's, this is a serious problem because the liver has a lot of blood vessels. We just saw in this picture here in the back. There's a lot of blood vessels here. There's a lot of blood. So if this adenoma ruptures, you can get a lot of bleeding and you can get death and shock and maybe even death. Okay. So that's it for tumors. I want to add one more miscellaneous liver problem. This is Rye syndrome. Rye syndrome is a fulminant liver failure. So it's very severe, very rapidly progressing liver failure. And then you also get hepatic encephalopathy, again due to the liver failure of liver function, um, and then buildup of ammonia that deposits and that goes to the brain and messes things up. And this occurs in children who took aspirin for a viral illness. Okay, children aspirin viral illness. Why is this all connected? Because viruses will alter the metabolism of aspirin. And so the aspirin isn't well metabolized in the liver, so it's going to accumulate in the hepatic mitochondria. And that's going to cause decreased mitochondrial function. What does the mitochondria do usually? Mitochondria usually does fatty acid oxidation for energy, for ATP generation. But because you have this accumulation of aspirin in the hepatic mitochondria that doesn't work, you don't get ATP, and then your hepatocytes die, and you get liver failure. Okay? And that is why you see a fulminant liver failure in children who took aspirin for a viral illness because that virus alters the metabolism, and this is Rye syndrome. And so that's it for our liver problems. Now we're going to go on to gallbladder.